So okay, so let's think about general sum games. So not zero sum anymore, but we're not you know restricted. It could be any kind of uh, relationship between the two players. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is realize well, well we can't really do minimax here anymore, right? Because that doesn't make sense. Right, that only works with zero sum games. Well, it's only yeah, that's well, it only it, it sort of assumes that the other player is trying to minimize my reward, and that's not the that's not the concept of a Nash equilibrium. We we'd like to do something analogous and find a Nash equilibrium in this general sum setting. So okay. what what operator do you think we would need in this context here? Nash equilibrium? Yeah. So that would be a very reasonable thing to do. Is instead of computing minimax, we actually compute of the two matrix game, right, c using Q1 and Q2, compute the Nash equilibrium of that and propagate that value back. It's a well-defined notion, right, that we can summarize the value of these two payoff matrices with, uh, with a pair of numbers, which are the values of the Nash equilibrium. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, so good. So we can do the same thing in the Q learning setting. Substitute in a Nash equilibrium, and we can call that algorithm Nash Q, which is uh, appears in the literature. Nice. Oh, minimax Q, by the way, is is something that I wrote about. Uh, Nash Q is a different algorithm. So it's not as cool as what you're saying. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes. So uh, so this this is now an algorithm. You can actually, well, this is a set of equations. It's not really clear exactly what it means, but we can think about turning that into value iteration. Right by turning this into an assignment statement. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happens? Well, uh, valuation doesn't work. No. So yeah. So if you you repeat this over and over again, things weird things can happen. It doesn't it doesn't really converge. It doesn't really solve this system of equations necessarily. Hmm. And if, unfortunately, the the reasoning here is even harder in the case of Nash Q. Because in the case of Nash Q, it's really trying to solve this system of equations using something like value iteration, but with extra stochasticity. And so it also suffers the same problem. It doesn't necessarily converge. There's not really a unique solution to Q star because there, you can have different Nash equilibria that have different values. Right. So there isn't really much hope of converging to the answer because there isn't a the answer. The, um, the policies cannot be computed independently. Right, so Nash equilibrium is really defined as a joint behavior, and so we can't just have two different players computing Q values. Even if we could compute the Q values, it wouldn't necessarily tell us what to do uh, with the policies, because if you take two different policies that are both half of a Nash equilibrium, two halves of a Nash equilibrium do not necessarily make a whole Nash equilibrium, because right. they can be incompatible. So, you know, so far so good, right? Yeah, I'm, I can't um, wait to see what happens next. The update is not efficient. Unless P equals P pad, which is to say computing a Nash equilibrium is not a polynomial time operation. As far as we know, it is as hard as any problem in a class that's known as P pad. And uh, this is actually a relatively recent result in the, na in the last five, 10 years. And this class is believed to be as hard as, as NP, so um, possibly harder. So it isn't really, doesn't really give us uh, any leverage, to computational leverage, to kind of break it down in this way. So that's unfortunate. And finally, the last little hope of, well, maybe we can define this kind of learning scenario using Q functions the same way we've been doing. Q functions are not sufficient to specify the policy. That is to say, even if I could do all these other things, efficiently compute a solution of, you know, build the Q values, make them so that they're compatible with each other. And now I just tell you, here's your Q function. Now decide how to behave. You can't. It's, there's not enough in information. You're depressing me, Michael. Yeah, so this is kind of sad. Uh, we go to the general sum case, which in some sense is the only case that matters because zero sum never really happens. And what we discover is that we lose all, seemingly lose all the leverage that we have in the context of Q-type uh, algorithms. Mm, mm, mm. And that's where we'll stop. Oh, so we're going to end on a high note. No, maybe we should say something positive before we depart. Let's do that. Come up with something positive to say. Okay. <laughs>